Hello, everybody. Welcome to Scholar Talks. My name is Laura Houston. And before we begin, I'd like to do a land acknowledgement. Um, we in the Anaheim Elementary School District acknowledge that we are on the land of the Tongva Gabrielino people who have continuously occupied this land for the past 8,000 years. And we are grateful and acknowledge this as their homeland as we gather here. So we are at the beautiful Sunkissed Elementary School. We do have a small live studio audience. I see everybody out there. Hi, everybody. And this is day two of Scholar Talks. And you may be wondering, what is a Scholar Talk? Well, it's a talk or a speech given by a person who is a scholar. And the students were able to choose the topic of their speeches. The assignment was very simple. Share something that is, that is important to you. It could be anything, any topic, anything that's important to them. And trust me, you're going to hear some very wise words from fifth and sixth graders today. And this year, we also added a new component, which is a soapbox speech. And a soapbox speech is a call to action type of speech um, where um, the student was able to choose a problem in their community or in the world and speak to it, more of like a civic assignment. So listen for the soapbox speeches too. So with that, um, I would like to welcome our first scholar. Um, we have a sixth grader from Betsy Ross Elementary School. And this sixth grader is going to be talking about why social media is a bad influence. Let's welcome Jocelyn. Buenas tardes, good afternoon. Today I'll be, oh, sorry. My name is Justin Navarro and today I'll be presenting my scholar talk which is titled, Why um, Social Media is a Bad Influence on People. Buenas tardes, hoy les voy a presentar mi discurso titulado, Why um, Social Media is a Bad Influence on People. I remember a day when I was lying in bed watching television when suddenly my younger brother ran into the room crying and yelling, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. I told him to calm down and tell me why he thought he was going to die. He said that he had swallowed toothpaste and saw on social media that if you swallow toothpaste, you can die. Then he told me he had gotten his information from YouTube and TikTok and thanks to this misinformation he had viewed, he thought he was dying. It is clear to me that social media, although entertaining, can be an unreliable source of information that can be dangerous and a bad influence. Hello, my name is Jocelyn Navarro, and today I'll be talking about why I think social media is a bad influence on people. One example of how social media serves a poor influence is the way it has made people think that to be perfect, one must look like a runway model. A person must have perfect nose, perfect teeth, bikini, or strong. This leads to people, in particular women, feeling bad about themselves and their bodies, also known as having a low self-esteem. Some people even develop eating disorders and force themselves not to eat so, the, so that they can lose weight, but in reality, it's bad for their health. According to the article, Women Tell, teenagers and young adults put too much attention on how they are noticed on social media. This can make them insecure and conscious about their body, weight, calorie intake, and how much they should exercise. Las redes sociales también pueden ser peligrosas. Por ejemplo, las redes sociales, los sitios web en particular, pueden vender cosas falsas como boletos para un concierto, boletos para juegos de fútbol o béisbol y robarles a las personas su dinero. De acuerdo al artículo, Playing It Safe, Unos sitios web corren riesgos sociales o riesgos tecnológicos. Por ejemplo, unos sitios web pueden tener un virus que puede destruir tu computadora, tableta o teléfono. Los sitios web no son las únicas cosas que puede tener un virus. También unos mensajes de correo electrónico pueden tener un virus. De acuerdo al artículo, Playing It Safe, el virus más común En los sitios web y en los mensajes de correo electrónicos es el virus spyware. El virus spyware puede tener acceso a tu, a tu información personal, por eso debemos de tener cuidado con los sitios web en línea y con los, eh, con los mensajes que personas desconocidas nos manden. Pero a veces los peligros no pueden ser evitados. Hay indicaciones que señalan que entre más prohibamos a los jóvenes el acceso a las redes sociales, más lo harán escondidas. 
Entonces, la solución no debe ser la prohibición. La solución debe ser promover el uso de las redes sociales con supervisión, monitoreo y cautela. Todos sabemos que la tecnología es una herramienta, pero todos también sabemos que hay unas herramientas que solo se pueden usar con la madurez y capacidad que viene con la edad. Por ejemplo, para usar unas herramientas como un martillo o un taladro, necesitarás madurez y saber cómo usarlo sin lastimarte. No le daríamos a un bebé un martillo para que construya una casa de madera. Y si necesitas madurez para usar estas herramientas, de igual manera necesitarás madurez para conseguir un dispositivo electrónico. Quizás no sea necesario revocar completamente los dispositivos de la juventud. Eso sería imposible, pero sí es posible limitar el, el uso de horas en el aparato, limitar las redes sociales y limitar con quién hablan. Estas restricciones pueden ser útiles para reducir la desinformación y mentiras. Así, niños como mi hermano y muchos más no pensarán que se van a morir por lo que ven en las redes sociales. Y las niñas o jovencitas como yo podremos a desarrollar nuestra propia idea de lo que es la verdadera belleza. Gracias por escuchar mi presentación. Thank you. Thank you, Jocelyn, for your wise message. And I'm so glad that you already understand that at your age. Sometimes it takes people well past adulthood to figure that out. Good job. So next, we have a fifth grader from Loera Elementary School speaking about technology and nature. Let's welcome Genesis. Technology should improve your life, not become your life, said by Billy Cox. Sadly, this has much more meaning than it should have for this generation. I think having land and not ruining it is the most beautiful art anybody could ever want, said by Andy Warhol. And again, th this has more meaning for, for these past years than it should. Okay. Um, Hello everybody, my name is Genesis and today I will actually be talking about two topics that might go together. Technology over usage and nature appreciation. First, I shall say that nature, I sh first I shall say that technology has taken a huge role in our everyday lives. And before you know it, you're already being invested in it. This is what makes our society as it is. So we spend so much more time on, on our, our technology than actually spending time with our loved ones and planet. Our society has been struggling with many challenges lately, and this is just adding another one to deal with. Most of the human population uses these devices almost all of the time for the worst, like searching for inappropriate <clears throat> music, websites, and images. I'm not saying all of the technology that is offered to us is bad, but most of it is because of the way and how long we use it. I'm sure it has done some good things, like making our lives easier and more enjoyable, but that doesn't mean it hasn't done anything bad as well. It runs our lack of sleep, privacy, mental health. It could cause attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, otherwise known as ADHD. It may lead to eye strain, and people have been bullied because of this, which is called cyberbullying. Also, these devices we've been using, such as phones, television, and computers, can cause bad posture. All of the seven things listed, and even more, can be caused by, you guessed it, the amount of time on our technology. People are trying to improve all of this when we should be protecting our planet and its gifts for us. Without it, a lot of the human population would be struggling with their survival in less than a day. This is because Earth gives a lot of our resources to us, such as food, water, shelter, and even more. We wouldn't even have technology without nature and its resources. Yet so many people are not caring for Earth when they should be, so the human population will not become yet another extinct species, only to exist in fairy tales and myths along with others. As stated before, our society has been facing many problems lately, and when we are caring for our planet, we are helping to solve one of those problems. We could help Earth by not using plastic as much, volunteering for cleanups around the neighborhood, planting trees, recycling, using long-lasting light bulbs, and to stop overusing the resources we have been given by nature. 
I believe that the, both the topics I have stated today are important be, because one, as stated before again, since we spend so much time on these little screens of ours, we barely have any more time to spend with our planet and loved ones. Secondly, since nature has been treated harshly lately, I think because of this that it should earn some appreciation. This might slip the minds of some, but for others, this is very important. Most of you here today know that life could either be short or long, so you have to spend it wisely because one day, when you need something or someone most, they would already be gone. You don't want to spend most of your lifetime just on these screens, on devices, but instead with the people who care about you and the planet you have been on for many years now. I hope that I at least inspired you today to spend more time with the people who love you and the planet you have lived on instead of using all of that time just on a screen. I, my gratitude goes to you for giving up your time to listen to my speech today, and I hope you, whole, you all have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Genesis, are you sure you're a fifth grader? You seem like maybe a senior in college. That was a beautifully well-written speech, and it had an impact on me. Good job. That was amazing. Thank you. Next, we have a speech from a fifth grader from Thomas Edison Elementary School. And um, Melanie is going to be presenting herself, I believe, as J.K. Rowling. So let's welcome Melanie. Hello, my name is J.K. Rowling, and I'll be telling you about myself and what I do. Most importantly, I'll be telling you about what I am most proud of, and that would be my Harry Potter books. First of all, J.K. Rowling is what's on all of the books and movies, but my full name is Joanne Kathleen Rowling. I am British, and I was born July 31, 1965, in Yale, England. When, I'm currently 57 years old. When I was little, my mother was seriously sick. My whole life I have loved trains, and I think it might be because my mom and dad went on a train. I later on became a secretary in London, England. My train to London got delayed, so I spent some time wandering around in my thoughts and stumbled upon an idea. My idea was about the boy who lived. His name would be Harry Potter. Harry Potter is a boy with black hair and a red scar shaped like a lightning bolt. He lives with his aunt and uncle and his ungrateful cousin. I thought some more while I was on the train. He would be a wizard, but he does not know it yet. He would have two friends. One would be a smart bookworm, and the other would be frightened by nearly everything. Then I remember that one mean teacher I had in school, and I knew there had to be a grumpy teacher that hated kids. When I got off the train, I went to my house and sat at my desk. I started writing down everything that I had thought of, and it later on turned into what at the time I did not know would be the first Harry Potter book of many. I would, not, I would not have been able to finish the book if my loving family wasn't there every day supporting me and telling me I can do this. My sister Diana would play with me when we were kids, and she still supports me in everything I do today, along with my mom and dad, Peter and Anne Volant Rowling. I'm currently married to Neil Murray and have three kids, two girls, one boy. Their names are David Gordon Rowling Murray, Jessica Isabel Rowling Arantes, and Mackenzie Jean Rowling Murray. With all, because of all of their support, I was able to get Harry Potter published in 1997 by Bloomsbury Children's Books. I have accomplished many things and earned quite a few awards. One award I got was the Locus Award for Best Fantasy Novel. Another award I got was the Goodreads Choice Award for Best Fantasy and an Andre Norton Award. I have even more such as the Glamour Woman of the Year Award. I got a lot of money from my Harry Potter book series and I chose to spend some I chose to donate some to Lumos. I donated a total of $30 million to help poor and disabled kids. Thank you for listening to my presentation and being a good audience. Thank you. Very nice, Melanie. I love how you presented that speech through the perspective of J.K. Rowling. That was beautiful. Good job. I learned a lot. And she's a very popular author at my house as well. So next, we have a fifth grader from Westmont Elementary School. 
Um, Aisa is going to be talking about turning lemons into lemonade. Come on up. Hello, my name is Aisa, and today I will be telling you my presentation on Life Gives You Lemonade, Make, When Life Gives You Lemons, Make Lemonade. Have you ever felt that you will never pass an exam you've been worrying about? Or do you even worry that you will never accomplish anything essential or important to you? Or at some points you probably wondered if you will never have any potential or meaning in life? That is okay. Just remember that if anything unfortunate or negative happens to you, you will always be capable of converting the unfortunate or negative thing into a positive one. Hello, my name is Isa, and today I will be speaking to you about how to convert an unfortunate situation or a negative feeling into a positive one. So, first things first, you will see something unfortunate or negative bad and just want to give up on it immediately. Don't do that. Doing so will not only make you feel ashamed, but it will also make you feel sick, depressed, and miserable. Rather, instead of feeling sick, depressed, and miserable, just remember that in order to convert an unfortunate situation or a negative feeling into a positive one, you must have a growth mindset and have perseverance. So. There are multiple ways in achieving this, but these things don't come by so easily. There are multiple steps in achieving an ultimate growth mindset and perseverance. But you may be asking yourself, what is a growth mindset? A growth mindset is derived from one word which is yet so. The growth mindset can adapt to unfamiliar situations in multiple ways, from getting lemons to simply getting bad vocation results. But these things don't come by so easily. There are multiple steps in achieving ultimate growth mindset and perseverance. Step one, meaningfully say and believe that you will be the best you you could ever be. Step two, remember that growth is a journey and progress, not a destination. Step three, don't strive for perfection or recognition. Strive for greatness. Step four, in order to improve yourself in multiple ways, you must recognize your mistakes as an important part of the progress. Step five, find a hobby that is unique to yourself and keep improving on it even when it gets difficult. If somebody follows these five steps to a positive growth mindset, they will surely be capable of converting unfortunate situations or negative feelings into positive ones. And one day I believe that somebody could eventually be you. So when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Thank you. More words of wisdom from a fifth grader. That was amazing and so important, right? Your mindset can change everything. Very good, good job. Next, we have a fifth grader from Adelaide Price Elementary School. And Isaac is going to speak to us about listening to music to help you focus. Let's welcome Isaac. Hello, my name is Isaac, and this is my scholar talk. Is it just me that focusing on classwork is hard? When I listen to music while doing homework or even classwork, it helps me focus more. When I listen to music while doing homework or even classwork, it helps me not pay attention to distractions. Listening to music while doing homework or even classwork is helpful because it can help students like me focus more on work. One thing that is important about listening to music during class are the different types of music. There are multiple types of music that people like to listen to. 
One of the most popular types of music that people like to listen to is pop music. One of the biggest reasons that pop music is so popular is because pop music is easy to listen to and sing to as well. I personally also like pop music. Some people, some people have harder times listening to music while doing their work because they need to work in a space without people speaking. Instead of listening to music that says lyrics, it'd be better. You should listen. You should listen to instrumentals of your favorite songs. Some people just want to listen to beats, and that's when lo-fi comes into play. Lo-fi is relaxing beats that can help anyone focus more on work. There are many types of ways music can help doing your work in class easier. One thing to point out is that if you're trying to get work done, it'd be best if you wouldn't listen to music that says fast lyrics. If you find yourself having a hard time focusing with the music you're listening to, you should try a softer tone like instrumentals or lo-fi. The pros and cons about listening to music during class. One of the biggest problems about listening to music during class or even studying is that it could distract you from things that need to be done. Music could also make you, make you forget things that are important, such as if you are studying for a test. It could make it harder to remember things. Some good things about listening to music during class is that music could improve your confidence. How you may ask? Well, music could improve your confidence depending on what type of music you listen to. Like if you listen to music that makes you feel powerful like a superhero. Music could also boost your, boost your mood. How, how you may ask? Well, music could boost your mood depending on what type of music you listen to. Like if you're feeling down, you should listen to a happy song to make you feel good again. However, some people not work some people do not work well while listening to music while working, even though music has a lot of amazing benefits. WebMD showed a study done in France that showed people who listened to music during a one-hour lecture did better on the quiz afterwards than people who just listened to the lesson without any music. Why should it be allowed? Allowing students to listen to music while doing their work can help students in all types of work. Music can help people focus as well. Music could also make the time go faster. It really just depends on what type of music you like to listen to. Is it just me or that focusing cla on classwork difficult? While working on homework, music helps me relax and focus more. Music can help students focus easier on homework as well as, as, well as classwork. It truly just depends on what type of music you like to listen to. Thank you. Very nice work, Isaac. I'm in agreement with you. I also listen to music when I create my work. And uh, when I was a classroom teacher, I also played music in the background, not with words in it, but instrumental music. I really like that a lot. Nice work, excellent. So for our next scholar, we have a sixth grader from Horace Mann Elementary School. And this sixth grader is going to talk about the benefits of video games. Let's welcome Kai. Hello, my name is Kai. Have your parents ever told you that you spend too much time on your Xbox, Switch, or PS5 playing games? Well, did you know that online gaming can actually help you learn. I'm gonna talk about the benefits of online gaming that can actually help you learn. First, one benefit of online gaming is language. For an example, There is a game where you have to speak and sometimes you don't know, like for an example, if you don't know, like if your friends talk a different language, you can talk, you mean, I, you can use a game or an app where you can learn a certain language what your friend is talking about. For an example, in Duolingo, you can, you can use it as like, there's different challenges, words, and you can write it out. Another benefit is memory. There is a game where you had to remember to get through. 
if you're asking what if in real life, it can help you and help others who lost something like a phone or a wallet. Second, there are many games ranging through Hogwarts Legacy through Rocket League. For an example, in Hogwarts Legacy, you can customize your character from his, ha from his or her hair to his or her voice. For an example, when I first played, I made it look like someone I know, but not the voice or the name. Then I named my character Alexander Cornelius. Another game is Roblox. Roblox can help you with social anxiety. You can, list, you can look at what they're typing rather than it's assuming it's only about you. Roblox can help you mentally and physically by making it my, by making you type better and talking well. Another game is Rocket League. Rocket League can help you with teamwork. If you don't have teamwork, your teammates or friends won't finish or lose in a championship game. If you do have teamwork, you can finish faster, win a lot more, and probably get your first trophy. Finally, there is there are many genres. There are horror, fantasy, and so much more. For an example, if you're a big fantasy person and into Harry Potter, you can play Hogwarts Legacy, and it's before the events of Harry Potter. Another genre is horror, and if you're a person who likes horror games, Phasmophobia is the most recommended game for you. That is how online gaming can actually help you learn and change your life. Next time, inspire yourself to play more. Thank you for listening. So Kai, you're a video game expert, it sounds like. And I noticed you have your Play Code Compete shirt on. Did you, were you a part of Play Code Compete at your school? Good job. That was an excellent speech. And I learned a lot from you because I didn't grow up playing video games. So thank you for teaching me. So um, next, uh, we have a sixth grader from Marshall Elementary School. Um, Julissa is going to be talking about a very important subject. She's going to be talking about bullying. So let's listen to what Julissa has to say. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jules, and today I want to talk to you about something that's pulled many effects on most of us, and that is bullying. Who here in the audience has ever been bullied? I can tell by facial expressions that many of us here have been bullied before. Bullying can be seen in many forms, such as physical, exclusion, and teasing. It can happen in school, out of school, and even online, which is called cyberbullying. But no matter how it happens, it can hurt us both physically and mentally. But the good news is, is that we can put a stop to it by following these simple steps. The first step is to speak up. If we witness bullying, we need to speak up. We cannot keep it cradled in because that can make things so much worse than it might already be. We need to speak up to somebody we trust, like a teacher, a counselor, or maybe even the principal. By doing this, we are not being a snitch or a tattletale. We are simply speaking up and being brave for, for those who cannot. If we get nervous, we can always say affirmations, like I got this or I am brave. Bullying can lead to depression, anxiety, and social anxiety. Now you may be wondering to yourself, well, why is this important? 
Well, it's because you'd actually be shocked to know that 75% of the bullying that actually happens is influenced by a friend or friend group, and because the bully is scared to losing their friends, they continue to bully the victim because of that reason. Stopping bullying starts with ourselves. If you're a bully, just think for a second. What's the point? What if you were the victim? Now, most of you might say, well, I don't care what others think, or I wouldn't care. But perhaps you're only saying that because it hasn't happened to you. In conclusion, overcoming bullying is easy, but it just takes bravery and patience. Let's make a world where bullying is not tolerated and everybody is accepted for who they are. Let's make this world a reality. Thank you. Excellent speech, Julissa. Important, too. And what were the two words? It takes bravery and patience. And I found it fascinating that 70% of bullying comes from within your own friend groups. It, it makes sense. Thank you for sharing that important message with us. Very nice. All right. So we have one more speaker. And um, this student is a sixth grader from Benjamin Franklin Elementary School. Cal and I, and Cal and I is going to be talking about Arctic animals um, who might be vulnerable to extinction. Okay, so let's welcome Cal and I. My boots crunch in the rough Arctic snow. I pulled my goggles down from my head, my eyes now protected from the icy, rapid winds. My suit fell bulky and uncomfortable, but I carried on. I noticed there was less ice than I remembered from my trip last year. What was left were little mere puddles of ice near the shore. Then, an explosion. I turned to a mighty iceberg, a great chunk of it now missing from its tip. I sighed and continued to plod along the Arctic shore. I clutched my journal close. A sketch brought across the first page of a polar bear standing on its hind legs. It had a wide, muscular build, it's fur, it's fur full and face fierce, a healthy bear. Finally, looking up from my journal, I saw it. A great, powerful polar bear was jotted on my page, but the bear that I saw, standing on a straight chunk of ice, was far from that. It was scrawny and had a sorrowful expression on its face. It wasn't great or fierce. It was feeble, malnourished, and sad. I even felt bad for the bear. The polar bear, or the Nanook to the Inuit, is a type of bear that resides at the Arctic Circle, surrounding the Arctic Ocean. At one point, polar bears were thriving, plentiful, and strong. Recently, scientists calculated a working estimate of about 22 to 31,000 polar bears left worldwide. This classifies them as vulnerable to extinction. But how could these miraculous, vicious creatures be vulnerable to extinction? Climate change. It is the cause to a number of dangers, such as habitat loss, animal damage, and the destruction to livelihoods and communities. It is also a cause, a cause of global warming. Polar bears' biggest threat is habitat loss. Global warming is the increase of the planet's temperature after a lengthy period of time. This is the Arctic's biggest threat. Arctic ice is being lost at a rate of 13% per decade. Many harmful things can cause global warming, generating, generating power using fossil fuels such as coal, oil, or natural gases, manufacturing goods using the power generated by fossil fuels, and cutting down trees, which releases carbon into the air that limits nature's ability to keep emissions out of the atmosphere. To a polar bear, the Arctic is their home and their land, and it is mankind that is causing their increasing demise. It is not too late. Climate change can be reversed. Studies show that conserving energy at home, like turning off the lights when you leave a room, walking, bicycling, or taking public transportation, and consuming more greens are some of the ways that humans can give back to the environment. Doing your part in saving the environment will, as more of us contribute and time flies by, reverse global warming and the millions upon millions of ice being destructed each decade. While they're not on the verge of extinction, polar bears are still consider, considered vulnerable. However, polar bears, the Arctic's ice, and the other creatures native to the Arctic, Arctic foxes, 
reindeer, walruses, seals, and more are not the only things in danger. Global warming causes more wildfires, longer periods of drought in some areas, and the increasing duration and intensity of tropical storms. As said by Francois Holland, former president of France, we have one single mission, to protect and hand on the planet to the next generation. Thank you. Your writing is like poetry. You really are an excellent writer, and I heard your call to action. So that was an excellent speech. Thank you for sharing that with us. Very inspirational. Well, that was all of our scholars for today. Um, everyone in the audience, let's give them another round of applause. So scholars, um, I recognize that it takes a lot of courage to come up on stage with microphones and lights and cameras in front of you, so good job. And um, I hope you all are very um, proud of yourselves because you really are um, luminaries, like spreading, spreading good words and light to everyone around you. Excellent. Thank you to all of the parents and guardians and teachers and administrators and uh, Mr. Brian Brooks, who is behind the camera always, and um, everyone here at Sunkiss School too, Principal Shoemate, um, who helped make this happen. Uh, we will be back here tomorrow for day three at the same time. And so I hope you tune in to join us. So uh, we will see you next time. Bye-bye.